everybody, I'm Random Bystander here, and I'm a random bystander who's here to tell you about my totally new real pet hamster, Stinky. Hey guys, where do hamsters like to party? Hamster Dam! Great, let's use that pun and make a fighting game. Kickstart it! Along with reviewing popular Nintendo games, I try and review things that are generally not known to the public. Games that often go under the radar, or something that seems so ridiculous, I have to make a video about it. And since I couldn't really afford to play Fire Emblem Three Houses, although I've seen gameplay footage, it does make me want to give it a try, I resorted to looking at the Nintendo site to see what cheaper yet weirder games were released on the eShop. This is where I found out about the motion control fighting game, Hamster Dam. I saw the trailer and it made me chuckle. Not because of the pun that made me groan a bit, but because you had this adorably cute hamster just beating the fur off of other animals Bruce Lee style. The trailer did not shy away from the awards Muse Games received for creating the game as well. My curiosity peaked again. This isn't sponsored, nor did I receive any free copies. I paid $10 out of pocket to play a game where you use the Joy-Cons to punch and kick other rodents as a kung fu fighting hamster. Although he's certainly adorable, isn't he? Aww. The game starts out with the main character, Hamster. What's his name? Hammy? Emmy? Remy? Uh, Pim. I don't get it. Pim and his grandfather start out the game being jumped by a gang of criminals known as Vermin. I mean, that checks out, I suppose. It's all told in visuals, but the Vermin have taken over the town, led by an evil chin... chin Chinchilla? What? I'm sorry, I worked at a pet store, and a chinchilla is this, not this Franken bunny over here. Either way, this scary stuffed animal club bouncer named Marlo is the main antagonist, and I'm not kidding here, destroys an entire city by making hamsters addicted to his special Marlo tonic and makes the once bustling city into a hideaway for criminals. All because Marlo made hamsters drunk. You conniving chinchilla, you! Fun fact, they don't really go into detail about the whole drinking thing in the Switch version. I only know about it because of the game's Kickstarter trailer. I'm not sure if they cut that detail out, but you do see empty bottles by enemies, so maybe they just omitted that detail. Anyway, Marlo and the Vermin gang take our grandpapa and we have to rescue him. And we do this by beating up the Vermin. I have to say, the character design is simple yet appealing to the eye. And all the characters and enemies do look interesting, but we'll talk more about that later. We flick the right Joy-Con in order to punch and kick Vermin in various ways. Are they able to attack you? Swing the left Joy-Con side to side in order to counter any punches from your enemies. But you can't punch and kick enemies willy-nilly, oh no. You have to time it just right. If you're able to flick the Joy-Con at the right time, you will do more damage over time. And once you build up your KO meter, you can do major damage to the vermin. You also learn other techniques, such as charge attacks where you hold the ZR button in order to break shields and armor for your opponent. You also have to respond to a variety of quick time events to successfully avoid damage and deal some powerful blows of your own. And trust me, as you see Pim ride his adorable scooter as the level is about to start, he really puts the beat up and beat him up. <laughs> Is he dead? Yeah, he didn't survive that. This game can get incredibly violent. Like, I know it's a cartoony beat-em-up, so violence is par for the course, but it just something about the way the hamster finishes off his opponents just makes me wince in pain. I think it's the fact I hear the sound of bricks whenever he smashes their face into the pavement. <laughs> Just because there's no blood doesn't make it any less barbaric. Again, there are a lot of video games that do so much worse, but you really feel the pain these enemies go through when our protagonist stomps their face in with his murderous paws. But he does it so adorably, you have to love him. Listen to his war cry every time he attacks. <laughs> It's just so cute. Speaking of looks, our protagonist is adorable, and the setting gets darker and more dangerous looking the further you progress through the game. The enemies look pretty decent too, although there isn't much variety with them. You will fight one of the three enemies, a giant buff bunny, a small rat that I'm pretty sure is addicted to some illegal substance, and the weasels from Roger Rabbit. One of these days you're gonna die, man. Although you are fighting the same enemies all throughout the game, their outfits and looks change slightly over time, and they get harder to deal with as well, such as they do more damage, they use shielding attacks, and their quick time events get faster. Mostly you'll be doing things like moving the control stick at the right time, or repeatedly tapping Y in order to not get hit. But is the gameplay itself fun? It's... pretty good. 
It's motion control, so that worried me right off the bat. But oftentimes, it felt pretty responsive. I flicked the Joy-Cons, and while I did notice a delay, especially with the left Joy-Con, it still wasn't enough to ruin the game for me. It did have some trouble reading my movements at first, but that was quickly fixed with just moving the Switch around. And then it worked fine. I will say I found my arms getting tired from the constant waving of the Joy-Cons. Which is strange, I didn't feel like using Kung Fu moves with my controllers. I felt like I was just more swatting a fly or waving a pom-pom. I discovered that while the game prefers you to use motion controls, it does give you the option to just use the Y button to punch regularly and the left stick to counter. I figured this out when I switched to handheld mode and then tried the same controls back in dock mode. And once I knew it worked, I avoided motion controls for the rest of the time. But motion controls or not, it is actually satisfying to fight these enemies. You have to put effort in your attacks and make sure everything is timed just right while watching enemies and making sure you're constantly ready for whatever they throw at you. I found myself really enjoying the main fight levels, as they were challenging, and I will admit, it was very satisfying to throw in a gruesome KO. However, there is a couple complaints I have with the game. First one is the glitches, and I know this game first came out on the Switch only a week or so ago at the time of this review, so glitches will happen, and they may even be patched by now, but I experienced a decent few. Like this one where Pim just paused after I KO the last enemy and it just froze. Or this one where the same thing happened again, and all I could do was just wait for the vermin to destroy me. Like he's stuck. I'm pressing every button I can, but I can't do anything. There were a few times where Bim would just freeze in the middle of an attack animation, and it looked like the enemy was being beaten up by the air. These glitches were easily fixed by just restarting the level, but still annoying nonetheless and worth pointing out. My other complaint, and unfortunately this is a bit of a big one, is that the gameplay can get a bit repetitive after a while. The footage of this review may all look the same with a few cosmetic changes, and that's because that's what Hamster Dam in general is, a beat-em-up with a cute design. A majority of all the levels will be in this style, and it does get boring after a while. Again, punching people can be great, but the game is extremely short about maybe three to five hours if you're going to complete a normal run. Even with that short time, you do get kind of tired of it all after a while. Even the loading screens are the same. After every single level, it's always the screen with the enemies, followed by the screen of Pim kicking a dummy. Maybe adding some more variety would be nice. That's more of a nitpick than anything I'm picking on loading screens for God's sake. But it becomes less of a, wow, that art is really cool, and more of a, all right, let's get on with the loading screen already. Thankfully, Hamsterdam does everything in its power to add replay value to the game. For one thing, and it has challenges for every level. Completing these not only gives you replayability, but also really challenges you, as these goals range from getting a high enough combo, to not getting hit, to beating a certain level at a certain time. Heck, completing these challenges are required to get through the game and even access some bonus modes. Although I found myself completing some of these with my first playthrough without even trying, so I didn't really replay them unless I had to to advance the game. Second, they add outfits for Pim to wear all throughout the game, which you can buy with the sunflower seeds you earn, which of course looks at Absolutely gosh darn heckin' adorable! But each article of clothing has a specific stat boost that can help you with certain points in the game. So if you're struggling with a level, or having trouble completing a challenge, you can always switch to clothes and have a better advantage. And if you think the game's too easy, there is even equipment that make the game a bit harder as well, such as clothes that make your attack slower, or eliminating KOs in general, which add more replayability if you wanted to create your own hard mode. I can't wait to see all the Hamsterdam challenge runs! The final way Hamsterdam shakes the up is with the different types of levels, the bonus rounds and boss battles. The bonus rounds are Pim and his scooter trying to collect as many sunflower seeds as possible before you get to the end. Nothing more to it than that, just a nice little distraction, a break between levels, and a chance to get some cash for those sweet, sweet duds. The boss battles can be the most challenging part of the game. There's mini bosses that include chasing down a car throwing bombs at you, to dealing with a giant bunny by throwing hamsters at it what? <laughs> Rest in peace, unnamed hamster. Honestly, these levels can really test your reflexes. The big bosses, or boss I should say, is against Marlo himself. First, you face him normally by throwing more of your friends at him, then beat him as he chases you in a giant hamster ball, and then at the final showdown, where, spoilers for Hamsterdam, he morphs into a giant chinchilla werewolf thing, and you go through this elaborate boss fight. First, you have to rescue the hamsters from being clawed to death. These hamsters don't get a break! They get addicted to drinking, get used as ammunition against vermin, and are nearly murdered by a demonic were-rabbit. <laughs> but in order to beat Marlo once and for all, you not only have to flick Joy-Cons, hit the Y button, and charge attacks, you must search deep down and perform the ultimate technique and unleash the ultimate power to become the rodent equivalent of Super Saiyan! <laughs> Hey, I 
And we beat Marlo, rescue our grandpapa, and Pim stretches his hamstrings as the credits roll. With no music. Just this awkward, long, painstaking silence. Why didn't they add any music? I don't know. I never thought I'd get this far. And the game ends with a Bruce Lee quote. Very fitting as this game not only took inspiration from him, but also I'm pretty sure we did at least 10,000 kicks in this game. So do I think Hamster Dam is worth it? Honestly, the game turned out to be better than expected. It's no Fire Emblem or Mario Odyssey, but it's a nice game to play in spurts if you were in a waiting room or on an airplane. A good game if you want to kill some time and beat Vermin while doing it. Now, do I recommend buying it on the Switch? And I did enjoy the game. And as stated before, I bought the game for about 10 bucks, which for normal Switch games is pretty cheap, even for a short game like this. However, upon further research, you can get the mobile version of this game for $2. And for many, that is a steal and worth more than getting the console version. I don't know how it performs on mobile. It could be better, it could be worse, but if you don't care about playing it on console or prefer it on your phone, that might be the better option. However, if you have some extra cash, want to try a new beat-em-up, prefer to do it on the Switch, and you want to try something both fun and adorable, you might enjoy the charm of Hamsterdam. Stinky? Stinky! Gosh, you spent 10 to 12 minutes doing a video and you lose a hamster. Where could he be? <laughs>